Now that we've gone through the patent drawing framework that I use, I want to use that same framework to step through the tool storage system patent application. This is based on the innovation disclosure form for the same invention that we put together in an earlier training module. I've copied the picture from that innovation disclosure form over into the slides here. And you'll see later in the handout that I'm providing to you that has a copy of the drawings themselves that all of these drawings are replicated in that drawing package. And so you'll be able to look at that and see how I would put together my drawings and simply label them with different figure numbers as we go along. It will all come together as you look at the example. For now though, I want to point out that you can put various types of drawings into your patent application, especially at the provisional patent application stage. For example, I would file my tool storage system patent application with this drawing in it. Even though it's a color photograph and photographs aren't allowed in patent applications unless you get special permission at the provisional patent application stage, as long as this picture or your picture can be stored as a PDF and transmitted to the patent office, you can include whatever information you want in your provisional patent application. So this shows an invention for storing tools in a shed or in a garage. The invention includes a series of panels. Each of the panels has holes in it and you can basically place your tools through those holes and rest them on the floor. Once you're done putting tools in, you can basically let go of the panel and the panel will drop until it lowers far enough to bind against one or more of the tool handles, holding both the tool in place and holding the panel in place at the same time. I like this drawing because it shows that you can put various types of tools into the same panel because I've got different size holes in there. Also, you can see on the very right that there's one panel that's not being used and so it's sitting in a stored position flat against the wall as opposed to extending out away from the wall. So how would I show this in my own provisional patent application? What I'm going to show you now are the actual drawings that when I went to do my innovation disclosure form initially, because I've done a lot of them, I went right into drawing mode. And I sketched out a bunch of drawings at that time. I didn't include them in the innovation disclosure form at the time because I didn't want to overcomplicate it. I wanted to show you the step-by-step -step process, how I would do my drawings separately from how I would do the innovation disclosure form. But now that you've done your innovation disclosure form, I'm going to show you how I did my drawings and how I put them together based on this one drawing here and some other thoughts that I had while I was sketching out my drawing. So these are really just the side views of my invention. They show that the panel is connected to a brace against a wall. Nothing's labeled here and that's okay. Or you could label it with words or numbers and that would be okay too. But as long as we know that we're going to describe this in the specification, we don't need to put the words in the drawings themselves. But this shows a panel with a brace and a hinge that connects the two. And then some tools are stored in the panel through the holes that we'll see in another drawing. Very simple drawing. This should take you a matter of a minute or less to draw something like this, even if you're not very good at it, even if you don't really like drawing things, even if you're not proud of your drawing, it really doesn't matter. As long as it conveys the core of your invention, let's be satisfied with that. The next drawings, and I'll point out here that this one drawing on the left looks funny because I sketched them out all on the same page. I then just simply took a photo of them with my phone, stored them to Dropbox, and then pulled them into my slide presentation program here. I also did the exact same thing by pulling them into a Microsoft Word document that you'll see in the sample documentation that I'm providing to you. All I did was take pictures, paste them in, crop them. And then in this instance, this one's got an upside down L shape to it because I had one of my other drawings drawn right in that corner there. And I wanted to just remove it to show this here. It's that simple. That's the same thing I would do in a provisional patent application is I would just take this hand sketch drawings if that's what I'm going to use. And then I would just isolate the different drawings from one another and put them on a page. You'll see that in the example that I'm providing to you. So here we see maybe a little bit more of a cutaway view or a sectional view of the same device that's shown in the prior drawings. This has the brace. It's shown up against the dashed wall. It's got a hinge that connects the brace to the panel. And then you can see the different holes for the tools that go through the panel itself. This, you can imagine, took very little time to create. I went ahead and added words to it just out of convenience. I think it's a lot easier at the provisional patent application stage to label your drawings with simple words as opposed to with numbers and then trying to correlate those numbers back to your specification. You can do that if you want, but you don't need to. So I just use words because it conveys the message a lot more clearly, I believe. 
The other drawing just shows a folded up version of that same thing. I didn't label the words on that drawing because I think it's clear when you put these two side by side that they're different implementations of the same device, just in different configurations or alignments. And of course, I'm going to describe all of these things in the specification when we get to that point. I should also point out that the first drawing we looked at was a system level drawing. This drawing helps you see the device as it's used in its environment, in this case with tools. The second drawings that we looked at were more of the device. This is how the device functions in one implementation. We'll get into other variants later, but this is just the initial device drawing that somebody can look at. These next drawings are what I would call the component level drawings. These show different variations of how the panel itself could be implemented. Really what we're doing is we're just breaking down the component parts and this is what the panel component of the overall device might look like in a couple different variations. Similarly, in the next drawings, we look at what the hinges might look like. This is to show the back brace and the hinge and how they might go together in different versions. Now, now these drawings, I would say, are probably the least useful drawings out of all that I've shown you so far, only because it's going to take more written word in the specification to explain exactly what's going on in these drawings. But once we get there, I can either refine these drawings a little bit more as I write the specification for them, or I might find that the specification will really clearly elucidate what I was trying to do in the drawings, and these drawings will be sufficient. So we looked at a little bit more detail on the panel component, and we also looked at a little bit more detail on the hinge component. What we get into next is the functionality of the device. Now, in a lot of physical products, a flowchart diagram is really not required, or maybe not even useful. But I put one in here simply to show you how I would do this in another application. I probably wouldn't put this into my own application for this tool storage system, but it certainly doesn't hurt to include this type of flowchart diagram in your patent application. In this drawing, the left-hand flowchart is really about how a user uses the panel to store the tools. The right hand is more about storing the panel away when it's not in use with the tools. So just to walk through these two flowcharts really briefly, we have, first of all, in using the panel, a user would lift the panel from the wall to approximately a horizontal position. They would then insert a tool handle through a hole in the panel and rest the tool handle on the ground or on the floor. After that, they would allow the panel to hinge downward or to fall downward until the panel engages the tool handle and remains stationary. This is where a little bit more explanation in the specification is anticipated to say that the panel falls until the tool handle binds up in between the different sides of the hole in the panel. And then they both stay there in position because the tool handle is holding the panel in position, the panel is holding the tool handle in position. Then a user can insert more tools into the panel if they want to and store as many tools as they want while that panel is being held up by at least one of the tools. When a panel is not being used, then in the right hand side of this drawing, you can see the flow chart specifies that a user removes all the tools from the holes in the panel and then they fold the panel up or down against the wall in an approximately vertical position. It's really that simple. That's the simplicity of operation of this device. And so since the device operates very simply, the drawings and especially the flowchart diagrams that talk about the function of the device also can be very simple. At this point, I think I've provided a pretty comprehensive overview in the drawings of my invention. However, when I was sketching out my invention, I also thought of a couple other variations that I could implement that might be useful. And so I have one that on the left-hand side here that is a self-supported stand for one or more panels in case you don't want to attach the brace to a wall. Another one is some people, I understand, might want that panel to sit really close to horizontal and be supported by itself. That's kind of a different invention of sorts, but... It's related to what I'm doing, so I included some variations, like an optional kickstand someone could put in, or an optional panel brace, or perhaps a supporting rope or chain. Those are just simple variations somebody might come up with in manufacturing a competing product, and so I wanted to cover them in my patent application too. The last variations that I thought of as I was drawing out these drawings initially were different types of hinges that could be used. I could foresee how these could snap on in different ways. I could also see how the holes themselves might have some type of gasket or some type of flexible insert that would 
squeeze up against the tool handles and provide a little bit more snug fit for a variety of different diameters of handles. Those I don't think are necessary in the invention, but again, they're just different variations that somebody might want to implement, and I'm going to cover those in my patent application so that if I need to, I can own those and commercialize and license those out myself instead of somebody else having the right to do so. I know that going through all of this may or may not make you completely comfortable with how to do your own drawings, but I want you to take the approach that if your drawings have a similar feeling to what I've just shown you, then you're probably on the completely right track. If, however, you've left out some details about your own invention that are important as to how you make it or use it or how it's manufactured, then I want you to make sure that you put a little bit of detail in your drawings about those different parts. Also, you might run into a situation where your invention is difficult to convey in drawings. If that's the case, it might mean that you don't need to put drawings in your application and you can just describe what your invention is in the specification using words. I had another workshop participant who was in the food space and they had created a new process for creating a certain type of food that nobody else was doing. I was actually really excited about it for them because it seemed like a very innovative and useful approach to create this new product. However, their invention was in the process of going through all the steps in order to create their product, not necessarily in the physical, tangible machine that made their product or anything like that. It was a series of steps, at least in the way that they were implementing it. It was a series of steps that they had to go through with different people and different equipment and different food products in order to end up with their final manufactured product that they would then sell to other people. While the final product itself might be patentable, it was difficult to show in a drawing. Also, the process was difficult to show in drawings. But I encourage them to at least, even if they didn't put it into the drawings, create some flowcharts that stepped through their process. Because the process of creating that flowchart is either going to help them create drawings, or it's going to help them describe their invention in their specification, or both. So even if drawings are unnecessary in your patent application, I still encourage you to try to draw as much of it as you can in simplified form to help you think through what goes into your patent application, how your invention is used, who would use it, what sequence it would be used in, and the other details that are related to your invention. I think you'll find that very useful as an exercise. If you feel stuck at any point, one thing I recommend is to go back to your search log that you created when you did your preliminary patent searching and look at some of the references that you thought were interesting or perhaps related to your invention. And I've listed a couple of those off here for the patents that I found that might have some relevance to my invention for the tool storage system. When we pull these up, what I want to do is just glance through the drawings that other people have created for a similar type of invention to see what they put in their patent applications and see if it helps me think of any other ways that I can start to think about and describe my own invention. So in this patent application, it was a tool organizer. This was a wheeled case with some vertical panels where you could put bags on them and pull the bags off, kind of modular in nature. And as I scroll through this one, I see that it's got several drawings in it. I've kind of shown all the mechanical drawings I think that I need to. They're showing how they use it, how they spread apart, different perspectives of it, the back, side, and front views, open, closed. Uh, let's see what else they've got. Let's see what else they've got. They show the bags, how the bags can come off and be mounted differently to a user's vest system. So I think this goes beyond what I'm doing. This doesn't necessarily make me think that I've missed anything in conveying my own invention. However, as I glance through this one more time, I think about how they're showing that the bags could be removed from the panels in their invention. And I wonder, maybe I'll think about on my end, whether or not there's a way to take my panels and unhinge them and use them as a carrying device for my tools. I don't know how that would work right now, but maybe there's a way to make it work. Maybe there's a mechanical system where that makes sense. So I'm just going to think about that on my side to see if that's a way to broaden my invention. This next invention was the golf cart case, as I call it. And it's just got a couple drawings from different angles. Looks like it's pretty simple. It's not something that shows me that I've missed anything. 
So I'm not going to use this to create any more drawings for myself. This next one is also a very simple one. It just shows a couple perspective and uh, isometric views of the invention, which I think I've already covered in enough detail in mine. I could add more isometric views of the different parts and pieces, but I don't think it's necessary at this stage to do that, and I think it would simply become more burdensome in the process rather than helpful. This last one that we're gonna look at, this is the screwdriver storage device that you fold up in a triangle and mount it to a pegboard. Again, it looks like we've covered all the same types of views that we need to in, in my patent application drawings as what is shown in this one. So after looking at all of these, I feel pretty good about my drawings that they show enough detail, like all these other patents do, that someone could make and use my invention. So I'm not going to use them to create any more drawings other than what I've already got at this point.